located deep in the woods of Farron, largely overtaken by nature, are the remains of a grand civilization. Massive stone carvings venerate boars, owls, and above all else, a dragon. While they seem to have originated, or at least thrived within the forest, their culture spread throughout Hyrule. From their monolithic stone towers that dot the landscape, to their mysterious labyrinths that dwarf any other man-made structure in Hyrule. These are the ruins of the Zonai. Initially left as an easter egg for theory crafters and fans who wanted to dive deep into the history of Breath of the Wild's Hyrule, the Zonai appear to have taken center stage in The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. So without you having to dive into the last six years of Zelda theories from across the internet, allow me to explain who the Zonai were and what we actually know about them. I'm John Reardon, you're watching NWR TV, and today we're exploring everything we know, and a little we don't, about the Zonai. Long before the events of The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the Zonai seem to have controlled large portions of Hyrule. Evidence can be found of two large Zonai settlements on opposite ends of the map. One, far in the south, is located within Farron and houses the Spring of Courage. The other lies far to the north and is referred to as the Typhlo Ruins. Whether Typhlo was the original name of this settlement or a name given to it later is unknown. However, Typhlo comes with its own unique mystery in that it's covered by a perpetual and unnatural darkness. At three points across the map, one can also find gargantuan Zonai mazes called Lome Labyrinths. At the heart of these labyrinths can be found the three pieces of an armor set called the Barbarian Armor. Many have speculated that the armor itself is Zonai in origin due to its placement within Zonai structures and its boar motifs which align with the carvings found in both Farron and Typhlo. The description of this armor refers to it as having belonged to an ancient warlike tribe from the Farron region. If we are to assume that this warlike tribe and the Zonai are one and the same, then we can assume that their civilization covered Hyrule by way of brutal conquest. It is worth noting that the headpiece in particular combines a boar skull with red braided hair, calling to mind the appearance of both Ganon and Ganondorf. This implies a strong tie between the Zonai and Ganon. An interesting combo in that Ganon is most commonly associated with the Gerudo, given that he entered the world as a Gerudo man. But let us consider for a moment the idea that the Barbarian armor does not belong to the Zonai, because there is some very specific evidence to support an entirely different theory. As previously mentioned, within the Zonai ruins, carvings are often found of three different animals, a boar, an owl, and a dragon. Within Hylian mythology, these three animals are often associated with the three aspects of the Triforce. The boar, often in reference to Ganon, represents the Triforce of Power. The Owl, in reference to Kepora Gebora, represents Wisdom. And the Dragon, specifically Farosh, the Lightning Dragon, whose name is derived from the goddess Feror, represents Courage. As mentioned previously, within the Zonai ruins of Feron, also named for the goddess Feror, the Dragon is the most heavily featured of the three. In fact, the largest structure within these ruins is the ancient Spring of Courage, around which the Zonai erected a giant dragon head. The Triforce of Courage is associated with the chosen hero, Link, and the Spring of Courage is the only spring located within a Zonai settlement. The Zonai clearly had a respect for all three aspects of the Triforce, but evidently held courage in higher regard than any of the others. So let me ask you this. Does this sound like a civilization that would model their armor off the appearance of Ganon? enemy of the hero and holder of the Triforce of Power? Let's revisit the armor from the Lome Labyrinths. We don't find this armor just lying around. Rather, it's sealed within shrines, guarded by a giant maze full of hazards. The armor has been locked away. It wasn't left abandoned by a dead civilization, but rather it was actively hidden. It is labeled Barbarian Armor, a name hardly befitting what was clearly an advanced and prosperous civilization like the Zonai. And here is where Tears of the Kingdom comes in. In the initial reveal trailer, we saw Link and Zelda wandering through what was clearly a Zonai ruin. Familiar stonework and carvings are dotted across the interior in addition to the very brief look we get at the exterior. Within this ruin, they find the sealed remains of the Gerudo King, Ganondorf. Just like the armor, 
Ganondorf is locked deep within a Zonai structure. It is almost as if the Zonai themselves defeated Ganondorf and his army and sealed away any hint of his power, taking special care to protect the spring most closely associated with the hero. In other words, that armor may not be Zonai armor, but rather the armor of their enemy. Now, there is one problem with this theory. The armor clearly states it originates in Farron, just like the Zonai. Is this region of Hyrule truly big enough to play host to multiple large civilizations? Once again, I think Tears of the Kingdom may be giving us a hint at those answers. The Sky Islands we've seen in Tears of the Kingdom all feature architecture and iconography associated with the Zonai. The dragon, Farash, can be seen in carvings and adorning structures. But that's the thing. Only the dragon appears on the Sky Islands. The owl, and more importantly, the boar, are entirely absent. And we know without a shadow of a doubt that these structures are indeed Zonai, thanks to very specifically labeled Zonai constructs that patrol them. I would propose that perhaps what we see on the surface are the remains of a civil war, with Zonai allegiance split between the forces of Demise in the form of Ganondorf and the forces of Hylia in the form of Link and Zelda. This is not the true armor of the Zonai, but rather, as its name suggests, Barbarians from Farron, a name likely given to them by the Zonai themselves. When the war was over, their civilization took to the sky forsaking the darker aspects of the Triforce, and leaving behind the remnants of their war sealed within great structures. With Ganondorf awoken, perhaps these islands are drawn back to their birthplace in order to help the bearer of the Triforce of Courage defeat the enemy once again. This is supported by the most recent trailer in which Zelda seems to be conversing with a Zonai who speaks of relying on Link to help them. Or, if all of that is wrong, and the Zonai really were in league with Ganondorf all along, then perhaps the Zonai have returned to serve their old master, and are holding Zelda against her will. Either way, that's everything we know and a few developing theories on the Zonai, their ties to the Triforce, and their role in Tears of the Kingdom. Keep an eye on NWR TV for more Zelda lore as we work our way toward the release of Tears of the Kingdom. Thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and checking out NintendoWorldReport.com for a whole lot more. If you'd like to chat with us about this or anything else, you can find a link to our Discord in the description. And if you want to get a hold of me specifically, you can give me a shout on Twitter using the handle on screen. Once again, I'm John Rarden. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time. This video was made possible by our generous supporters on Patreon. Did you know that Nintendo World Report is funded directly by fans like you? When you support Nintendo World Report on Patreon, you get immediate access to multiple exclusive podcasts every month, exclusive Discord channels, an early look at select content, and more. All for as little as a dollar a month. Check out patreon.com slash nwr for all the details.